this is actually a really good problem uh, for engineers and physicists and mathematicians. Uh, Fourier series are used in signal processing all the time, also computer science. Um, and usually they're infinite, but this is a finite Fourier series. And they give you the expansion of the series. Um, it's a summation from n equals 1 to some larger n, usually to infinity, but again, of coefficients times sine of nx. So, for example, a sub 1 sine of 1x, a sub 2 sine of 2x, a sub 3 sine of 3x, and so on and so forth, all the way down this line. And we want to, we want to show that the mth coefficient, this guy uh, I will highlight in blue, actually I don't even have an mth coefficient, somewhere in there is a coefficient a sub little m times sine oops, of mx. We want to showcase that this coefficient, a sub m, uh, is given by 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine of mx. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Probably the oddest thing about this is going to be that um, we don't even know what the nth term of the series is, but we're showing somehow magically that a sub m turns into that. So really what they want us to do is they really want us to evaluate 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine of mx. And they want us to find out that that actually is a sub m. So they are uh, pretty, it's pretty poorly worded, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and say, well, this is equal to 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi. f of x they gave us as that summation. So I'm going to write the summation down. Summation. Uh, little n equals 1, the index starting at 1, all the way to some large number of a sub n sine, oops, it's supposed to be i right there, sine of nx. And that summation will multiply sine of mx. Dx. And this right here, so this summation is just a bunch of signs um, throughout, in fact. So if you take a look at this, this can be 1 over pi, integral from negative pi to pi. And I'm going to write it like this. It's going to be a1 sine of 1x plus a2 sine of 2x plus dot, 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 all the way down the line, plus eventually you get to a sub m sine of mx plus dot 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 all the way down the line to a sub capital N sine of capital Nx. And all that is being multiplied by a sine of little mx dx. So we would like to, uh, you can see we're going to have, if capital N is 13, let's just say, then we're going to have 13 integrals, right? A1, A2, all the way through A13. And um, it's going to be a product of signs. So let's look at in general. So as an aside here, and I'll write this aside in red. Aside, let's take a look at the integral from negative pi to pi of sine of, I'm going to use, little m uh, here, because that's constant in our formula. But I'm going to take a look at sine of n x times sine of m x. Now, that n actually um, changes throughout our formula. It could be 1, it could be 2, it could be little m, it could be big N, whatever it is. But I'm just trying to find a general formula for it. Okay? Well, that's a product of signs. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, a product of sum formula. Okay, and that's going to be, if you look it up in the book, one half times the cosine of the difference of those angles, nx minus mx, minus 
the cosine of the sum of those angles, nx plus mx, and then dx. Okay? So that's what we have so far. And I'll pull that one half out front, actually. You can actually integrate that. So one half. Um, let's see, the antiderivative of the cosine, uh, maybe I should have uh, mentioned here, this is going to be n minus m times x within that argument, and this will be n plus m times x within that argument. It just makes my life a little bit easier as far as integration goes. So if I integrate the cosine, you know it's going to be the sine of that n minus m times x. However, because n minus n is multiplying x, then we have a division by n minus m here, right? And then minus uh, the antiderivative of the cosine, again, is the sine. And we have n plus m times x. And of course, we were multiplying x by n plus m, so the antiderivative will have a division by n plus m. We're going to evaluate this from negative pi to positive pi. Now, there's somewhat of an assumption here. This is assuming, assuming n is not equal to m. That's a pretty big deal. Also, by the way, it is also assuming that n is not equal to a negative m. However, if n were equal to a negative m, Remember where little n and little m come from. Little m is some point within this sequence. So it's a positive number. And little n is also a positive number. So there's no way they can be opposites. So I'm not worried about that. Okay? So this I'm not worried about. But it could be the case that little n is equal to little m. So if I'm only dealing with the case where they're not. Okay? So if they're not equal, if if we're looking at this and we're saying like, listen, listen, little n is not equal to little m, then that's this case right here, okay? So let's continue this out. Well, when you plug pi's into this, we have the sign of some integer. Remember, this is a difference of integers. So this is some in natural numbered integer k. Uh, times pi over n minus m minus, again, the sine of some other natural number, I'll say k sub 2, so we'll call this k sub 1, uh, times uh, pi all over n plus m. And then we subtract sine of that k1 evaluated at negative pi. But again, that k1 is just a, a natural number over n minus m. And then plus uh, let me move this over sine of k sub 2 um, times a negative pi over n plus n. Uh, all I did was plug in pi's into these arguments and then subtract off the negative pi plug-in. But the thing is, uh, the most important piece here is that each of these numbers, k1, which is n minus m, and k2, which is n plus m, are natural numbers. So um, they are some, well, they could be integers. They're integers. So it's like negative one or two or five or six. But the reality is any integer times pi sign evaluated that will be zero. So all of these signs here, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, they are all zero. Okay, so this tells me that if n is not equal to m, then the integral from negative pi to pi of sine of nx times the sine of mx dx must be zero, right? Because this is all equal to zero. So really, I only have to concern myself with, with this product here, sine of mx, this guy right here,
times all of these guys, sign of one, sign of two, and so on and so forth, all the way down to this guy, but not including this. Okay. So all the other ones, those products, when we integrate them, will turn into zero. So really, that integral, which is one over pi times the integral of, uh, of this mess, I'm going to write off to the right-hand side is equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of a sub m sine of mx times sine of mx. Oops. Sorry, I'm right out, writing off the screen here. dx. Which is the same thing as a sub m over pi, integral from negative pi to pi, of the sine squared of mx dx. And now we can use a half angle identity for this case specifically. So that's a sub m over pi, integral from negative pi to pi of, uh, let's see, 1 minus cosine of twice mx all over 2 dx. I'll pull that 2 out front. So this is a sub m over 2 pi integral negative pi to pi of 1 minus the cosine of 2 mx. Oops. dx. And now I'll go ahead and integrate a sub m over 2 pi times the quantity. The antiderivative of 1 is just x. The antiderivative of the cosine is the sine of that 2mx. Of course, because x is being multiplied by 2m, there'll be a division by 2m out front. And it was a subtraction to begin with. And we're going from negative pi to positive pi. All right, let's try these out. Now, remember, when you plug pi into sine, you have 2 times a an integer times pi. Sine of an integer times pi is always 0. So both of these, when we plug in, will turn into zeros for the sine. So this is really going to just equal a sub m over 2 pi times evaluate x at pi minus evaluate x at a negative pi. Remember, the signs turned into zero. So that's a sub m over 2 pi times 2 pi, or in other words, a sub m. So what have we shown? You might be lost at this point, so let me show you through a chain of equalities. We have shown that 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine of mx is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, and this, and this, and this, all the way down to this. That is, that 1 over pi integral of negative pi to pi of f of x sine of mx dx is equal to a sub m.